Hey YouTube, I'm working on a 96 Ford F-350 Power Stroke. Um, I bought this truck as my kind of work truck and it's been great. I love the size of it, gets the job done, just about anything I need to do. The one thing I really don't like about this truck are the vacuum assisted brakes. So today we're going to be converting the vacuum assisted brakes to Hydro Boost. There's a whole host of reasons why you'd want to convert an old vacuum assisted unit to Hydro Boost. Uh, to name a few for this particular truck, the working brake pressure is almost double what the vacuum assisted unit is. Uh, the pedal response will feel much better, doesn't feel like just a floating pedal. Um, and the truck will stop in a much shorter distance than it would with the vacuum assisted unit. Uh, other than that too, I didn't want to have to rely on a vacuum pump for my brakes to work. Uh, God forbid that a vacuum pump were to ever go out, it could be a bad day. So let's get started. So if you take a look here between the master and the booster, it's actually, it looks pretty wet here. And that's typically evidence that the master has gone bad. There's seals in here that hold back the fluid, but they get old, worn out, and before you know it, you have a leak. So that could explain why I have poor braking performance, but as opposed to just replacing the same unit, getting the same sort of mild, poor brakes out of it, figured just replace the whole unit, replace everything, and make it function like a newer truck. Another thing you can notice here is the relative size of the master. I know it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but the biggest thing too on here is they stamp the piston size. So right here is one and five sixteenths, and one and down there is one and a quarter. So you're dealing with a larger piston inside too. That should greatly increase the pressure. And I'll make a list of all the part numbers and parts that I needed in order to do this job. First thing you want to do is open up your master cylinder drain as much fluid out of it as you can, and please dispose of it properly. Then disconnect the two electrical connectors. Somewhat hard to see, but there's a clip up here holding the pin for the brake pedal to the rod of the booster, and then there's four mounting bolts on the firewall that we need to take out. And that's what the spring clip looks like when it's put through the hole. This bent side is on the opposite side and kind of locks it in a lot like a diaper pin. And all the mounting nuts on the firewall are a 14 millimeter. Then pull the vacuum hose off the booster. And next we take off the nut for this brake line bracket. This brake line, that brake line, and the whole unit should come free. And here is the old unit. We may or may not need to save this bushing right here on this rod end. I will get back to you guys on that. But we reuse all the hardware and all the lines. All right, I want to talk about the boosters here and what's going on. So I had to stop recording because this ended up not being the correct part number for the booster assembly. Uh, I went to bolt up my master cylinder onto there and the span of the bolts is too wide for the flange on the master, regardless of what way I, I orient it. So I'm calling around having a hard time finding one. Eventually I find an AutoZone that does have one in stock that day, or you know, today. So I was fortunate to find that. And um, I just wanted to show you a few other things with this. Uh, there's a lot of speculation online that these don't come with the push rod spring and, and retainer assembly here. Uh, and it even says in an instruction to swap yours over from your booster that you already have. Well, in my case, I don't have another one of these because this is just, I'm buying this new part outright. And um, so these are getting kind of hard to find. And a lot of that reason is because guys are swapping them over and they don't have a core to give back because there is no Hydro Boost core coming off of the car. Um, other than that, it also comes with the flange and the studs to mount it. So I got pretty lucky there. And then one last thing I wanted to talk about was it gave me instructions to install the, um, replace the master cylinder's flange seals enclosed. They came in this little plastic bag here. And uh, I put them on the studs here. I'm pretty sure that's where they go, just to keep water and dirt and dust out, but if they go somewhere else, please let me know. 
and uh, I'll address it. Other than that, I uh, should be ready to go. The master lines up and bolts up, so let's get it installed. All right, the Hydro Boost unit goes in with the accumulator on the bottom left corner. If you're looking at it from the front of the truck, and then so I've got to wiggle it in place, and I just kind of set it down there for now. And I'll go tighten up the nuts inside the cab, and then we'll put the master on. Okay, so now it's time to put the booster on the dowel for the brake pedal. And uh, you gotta swap over your little plastic uh, bushing from your old booster. But then you can just kinda sneak that in there. Even with the hardware tight on the flange uh, for the firewall, you can sneak that in. And then don't forget your cruise control, if you have it, um, switch so that it knocks down the cruise control when you press the brakes. And then uh, after I put that on, then it's a little safety pin, goes up through that hole, and then it's installed. And that's what it looks like, all installed. Kinda hard to tell, but switch is in place, safety pin's in, ready to put in the master. Okay, now you take the master, and just keep your hoses, lines, and electrical connectors clear. And that just kind of slides on like that. All right, so off the old master and booster assembly, you need to grab the, I believe this is the brake light switch sensor. It's a little poppet valve in there. I'm pretty sure this is for the brake lights. The other switch that was on the pedal is for the cruise control. I think it, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but you need that sensor and then you need this here, which is the proportioning valve. Oh. I was on there tight. And what this does is it's for the rear drums. So when you press the pedal, drums can't handle the pressure that a um, caliper can. So what they do is they put this proportioning valve here to step down the pressure on the rear drums. That way you don't blow them out. In a few places I've read, they said you need to swap over the proportioning valve out of the old one. But unfortunately with this one, it looks like the threads are different. So I'm gonna try to use the new one. I'm not sure what makes it different or not, but I don't know, gotta try it, I guess. I'll put that back in. Anyway, uh, I just took the cap off of the threads for this sensor on the unit itself. I wish I could show you guys this. There's just nowhere, no good spot to put the camera. But this threads into the new master. And then just tighten that down. And then the connector for it will just kind of relocate down here. All right, so the next step, once you get the master and booster bolted in, is getting in the power steering pump. And the reason why is it's got this extra barb here, and that's what feeds the fluid up to the booster. So you definitely need this for sure. And with the serpentine belt taken off, that you get down to this pulley here, and you need this special puller to remove the pulley. Kind of hard to see, there we go. You're gonna need that special puller pull that pulley off and then we can swap it over to your new power steering unit. That also allows you to get to the three bolts that mount the unit onto the bracket there. So anyway you need to take that pulley off. So what makes this tool so great is the fact that it fits down in there and you don't need to pull the radiator shroud or fan shroud or anything and uh, these half moons just sit they grab onto the little nub there and then the shaft of the pump stays put and you put this little bolt in there and then you put these rings around these. It's hard doing this one handed. Put the ring, say that one was in there. And then when you tighten down the bolt, it pulls it off of the shaft. So definitely 
Definitely need that tool to do this job. Next, we'll take this fitting off. The fluid. Check this out. All right, so I have the new reservoir just kind of mocked up in place. This line, the old high pressure line that came right off the reservoir uh, to the power steering box can be removed and it'll be replaced with this line that'll go down to the steering box and then this line here, this 90 degree one, goes right to the reservoir so the fluid gets pumped, goes up through the hydro boost unit, comes out of the hydro boost unit, goes down to the steering box and then from the steering box uh, with the return hose down here, this little clamped one, and then the last other one is just to run the one hose from the barb here to the barb on top of the hydro boost. I'll show you it all installed in just a minute. So looking in the wheel well here, it's this forward line on the steering box and uh, that you remove and then you replace it with that smaller line from the top. You'll all see it in a second. And don't forget to put the O-rings the way that they call out for, for the fittings. I got tricked again because there's two different style hoses or fittings for the hoses to go to the steering box. So I will post the correct part number in the description, um, although this was listed as the correct part for this. So fortunately I bought another one just in case of a different part number. And so I'll just throw that one in. Okay, so I got everything mocked up. I got the Hydro Boost unit in. The longer power steering hose goes down here underneath these vacuum lines and then to this uh, port here on the reservoir. The other side comes down, goes underneath the vacuum lines, gets somewhat close to the exhaust manifold, but far enough away I'd feel comfy with it, and then down to the high pressure side on the steering box. The one last line I need to run is the flexible hose from here to here. And then other than that, I just need to put everything back together and fill it up with fluid. Oh, the other thing, the pulley um, on here, inside this shaft, it, it's threaded. So I'll just put the pulley on here, put a bolt on one side and just drive it in and let the pulley sink down onto the shaft. Put the uh, serpentine belt back on and then fill it up with fluid bleed it and then bleed the brakes itself and the other thing is this vacuum line here um, can be cut and plugged or just plug it if you want um, because you no longer need that vacuum line going to that booster all right and then this is the other reservoir hose coming off the barb that goes up here and i just hose clamped it it's 3 8 hose you can get it at any auto parts store as for the pulley you can see sitting there on the shaft I had to get a shorter bolt in order for it to clear with the fan shroud for the radiator. But it's, uh, you can't really get a great picture on it, but it's just a special, like you turn this one bolt, tighten it up with this one, and uh, it'll just push the pulley back onto the shaft. It's threaded inside the shaft. The last step is to bleed the brakes, and it's starting to build a pedal for me a little bit. And uh, with the Hydro Boost unit, you have to turn the wheel a bunch of times, pump the brakes a bunch of times, and then eventually it'll work its way out. A lot of guys have different ways of bleeding Hydro Boost installs. Alright, so after a little fight with a wheel cylinder bleeder valve, you can see it's just all one piece. So it's completely frozen on there. So I had to replace the wheel cylinder, and then I'll get this rear wheel back together, and then bleed all the brakes, and hopefully, hopefully, I'll be done. Now for the results. So you might be asking, well, hey, that's great. You installed it, how do you like it? And I gotta say, I absolutely love it. Uh, the pedal feeling is excellent. The response is great feedback. And um, the stopping power now of this truck is so much better than before. So I made a quick film before to show you what I was dealing with and what it felt like and now what the results are. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, stay tuned for more content.